Professor Elwood, thank you for joining us this evening. What do you believe are the primary themes of Bologna's contemporary history? Well, I would identify four themes above all. You have to start with politics. You have to start with the fact that this was a town run by a special version of the Communist Party for many decades. Uh, and the Communist Party built a kind of model urban experience in, in Bologna. Uh, and that has left a, a long legacy. Much weaker now than it was, but it's still around. Then, of course, you have to look at the economy. Bologna sits on deep decades of opulence. Bologna has been incredibly successful, successful economically. Uh, uh, at the same time, Bologna has produced strong lobbies, which have nothing to do with the Communist Party. Lobbies of, of industrialists, retail people, finance people, uh, all kinds of other sectors, which have nothing to do with, with the Communist Party. The Communist Party did favour small and medium enterprise in a very big way. This whole network of people who have come out of the Communist experience who become entrepreneurs, and their legacy still exists. Bologna flourishes thanks to food, an agribusiness, uh, packaging industry, which is also related to food, uh, small technology, high, highly specialised micro technology, uh, logistics, obviously, and various other services. The, the university, of course, is an enormous boost in the economy because it's, it's, so, it's so huge. Um, the third, the third um, theme would be Bologna as a cultural superpower on a, on a model on a miniature scale. Because of the university, the size of 80,000 students are registered right now, because of its incredible heritage, nine, over 900 years uh, of existence, because it's attracted intellectuals and researchers from all over Europe, and of course it's still the number one by ranking, uh, the number one university in, uh, in Italy. Um, but beyond the university, there's also the fact that the, the place is reinventing itself, like many European cities, giving itself a brand, Janus Bologna, rediscovering, refurbishing palaces, opening new museums, things like that. So that's the third thing, the Bologna's cultural, uh, cultural activism. And fourth is the, the texture of Bolognese life, the character of, of the city. Sometimes it feels like a big country town, sometimes it feels like a busy commercial centre, other times it feels like an international hub of, of, cultural, of cultural encounters. Um, at the same time as the character of its buildings, the character of its, of its people, the character of its humour, if, it, if you like, it's a bit, which is earthy, a bit vulgar, ironic, uh, it's unmistakable, especially compared to the rest of the rest of the country. What role did the Communist Party play in shaping Bologna's lasting economic structure? The Communist Party always favoured small and medium enterprise. The idea was that if you concentrated on, on these, these kind of uh, companies, you would avoid the creation of a capitalist monopoly class. Uh, the big industrialist type like the Nelly's in Turin, the Fiat, uh, the Fiat Empire. At the same time, the cooperative movement, which actually became very, very big and very strong in agribusiness, retail, building, construction, things like that, uh, they were all part of the same, the same sphere of influence, if you like. Um, the Communist Party uh, had its idea of what trade unionism was about uh, and uh, the role of local, uh, local government in supporting business, very pragmatic, very results organized, uh, oriented, very open to the rest, uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, and uh, and so they can take they can take some credit definitely for the ongoing prosperity of the place in spite of the the, 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 the great crisis, which is not as bad in Bologna as it is in many other parts of Italy. How would you characterize Bologna's identity in the most recent years since the global economic crisis? Well, Bologna has a crisis of confidence, like the rest of the rest of Italy. Foreign direct investment is still coming into Bologna. Volkswagen are uh, uh, investing in Ducati and Lamborghini. Toyota has made an investment in an industrial plant. Philip Morris, the American cigarette company, is building a new factory here, no less. Uh, so there is churn. Old companies are going out of business. New ones are coming in. Uh, quite, uh, there is definitely a conversion process going, uh, going on. Uh, confidence is, very, is, is not what it should be. So levels of investment are low. Uh, levels of, uh, of unemployment are relatively high. You remember, have to remember, before the crisis, there was 2.9 percent unemployment in Bologna, practically non-existent. Growth was 2.9 percent per year, extremely healthy. So the Bolognese used a very high standard of living. That has now stagnated. 
that is now stagnant. Nobody's getting any, any richer anymore uh, along the pattern that they, they used to. So they suffer. They suffer the general malaise of Italian politics, the Italian governments, the malfunctioning bureaucracy, the malfunctioning of the judicial system. You cannot get away from that. Nevertheless, Bologna's history does show that in spite of all these disadvantages, you could do extremely well in this part of the world.